<clears throat> well, again, folks, in 113. Today we're going to be covering section 11.6. Here's a quick view of the calendar. Let's see. Right, today is Thursday, April 29th. And as per the schedule, we are covering 11.6. Um, let's see. Right, the packet that I have for you today. As this page here's an overview that I made yesterday um, to hopefully uh, clarify. I'm going to go through this, and you could add notes to it if you'd like. Uh, then there are, as always, the alternative presentation. I swiped this from the book for you, so these are the same formulas that are relevant to 11.6. And then there are several problems from the book. Um, I actually included uh, some examples of my own. I think I stole this from my lab, so it might be worth going through that. And here is another one from, I think, maybe a different book I have used. Okay, so we'll print those out and I'll go through these. All right, let's go over this first. say English is uh, filled with ambiguous words so last time when we were covering section 11.5 um, we were talking about we the royal we uh, compound inequalities collectively or and right? in algebra there are compound uh, inequalities we're talking about compound probabilities in this case um, and you would decide what formula to use. I didn't write those here because I covered those last time, but you would decide whether to use a, a formula for uh, the or situation based upon whether this, the described events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. So I added a little bit to this. I hope it makes it a little bit easier. Um, something, a situation is mutually exclusive when the conditions described, when the conditions described cannot occur simultaneously. So what you must do in a situation of or is to add probabilities, right? Which is why these are partly the addition rules. If your situation is not mutually exclusive, that means the conditions described that can occur, that can occur simultaneously. Um, so they must also be subtracted. The reason that you subtract is because you don't want to count something twice. So that is accounting for that. All right, so you're still adding ultimately, but at the end you subtract uh, the situation where something is simultaneously two conditions. All right. You decide in the, in the case of and, at least historically for us to this point, uh, based upon whether you have dependent or independent events. All right. If you see the phrase without replacement, all right, that means that when you are pulling, say, a second card from a deck, you are calculating probabilities of uh, playing cards. Um, the, you, the, the, the first event is affecting the second event, right? Because you have already pulled a card or something like that. You know? The uh, second effect is affected by the first if there is no replacement. If, on the other hand, you have a situation where there is replacements, you, you pull a card out or you pull a lottery ball and then you put it back in, all right, there is one has no bearing on the other. Okay. Now here's the the difference that I would the distinction I would make when you have and statements that are referring to potentially this situation or what we're going to cover today. This is eleven five basically. 
This is 11.6. It's another formula. There's two different contexts, right? There's the context of consecutive events, right? I mean, and if there are consecutive events, they either have no effect on one another or the first affects the second. And it could be more than, you know, it could be several events too in sequence. In these cases, you multiply, right? Um, in this situation where you're, you're discussing something in the context of something, perhaps one thing, perhaps, all right, that exhibits both conditions that are described, all right? Anyhow, what is really important here is that in this context, time doesn't actually matter, all right? It's not an issue. Something can occur uh, or, or not. Uh, pardon me. Uh, something may have occurred or it will, but time isn't really important in this situation, okay? So try to separate it out in your mind, at least for right now, to get you a feel for it. These are consecutive events. These may be consecutive events, all right? Um, uh, but I think, no, uh, let me rephrase that. These are consecutive events, but th this is more likely uh, a situation where you're talking about maybe one thing, you know? Not, not exclusively, but maybe one thing that exhibits both conditions, all right? Anyhow, time doesn't matter in this case. Um, the way that you would read this is as follows. The probability of, you know, when you have things grouped in parentheses, event two, that's a subscript, given that is this line, event, were, uh, event one has occurred, all right? That's kind of similar um, to uh, dependent events, all right? Uh, there is some similarity there, but this is a less complex formula, really, all right? Um, this implies, if you see the phrase in context written in your problem, given that, all right? If you're trying to decide what is the figure that goes here and what is the figure that goes here, it's usually whatever follows this expression, given that, that is the, uh, the E1, right? This, the first event is what it would be referred to as. Other times you'll see a formula that they won't use subscripts. They will call this B and that A. So if you'd like, you can rewrite the formula in that form if you like. There would be an A here and a B here and an A down here always. Okay? But that's up to you. All right? Sometimes it gets a little confusing when the abbreviations happen to be talking about something that is maybe black. All right? As in playing card suits. You know, a war uh, A is in the letter A of a grade, you know. So you have to have, you know, some leeway to change, you know, the labeling, at least. But this is essentially the first thing. This is essentially the second thing, right? And this is how it would be in the formula, right? That much is important, right? Time, not, not really, all right? Anyhow, look for the phrase given that, right? Um, if you have to decide for yourself... All right, and I'll give you an example if I'm writing on myself again. Um, if you have to decide for yourself which is um, the first event and which is the second event, um, I would do it this way. You won't always have problems like this, it really depends. Um, the thing that is described more specifically, that's your E2, your, your second event most likely. All right, something that is less specific, all right, that is probably your E1. Now, it is possible that you could change the phrasing of something, but this would be the more interesting example, I think. I'm gonna show you something that illustrates that in a few minutes. All right, so anyhow, remember, there are formulas for each of these things, and you had these from last time, all right? These are adding, or potentially adding and then subtracting. These are multiplying, and in which case, um, you may have to change uh, the denominator of one fraction and potentially also the denominator of the, uh, the numerator of a fraction as well all right, for your dependent events. All right. um, and then this is this unique new formula. All right. All right. When we're, again, we're talking about something and uh, as if it were maybe one thing that exhibits both conditions that are being described. All right. Time is not important, okay? Make that distinction ultimately. All right, so let's do some examples. Yeah. 
and we'll get rolling here. Oh, oh incidentally, um, there are different textbooks will write this formula in slightly different ways. So I, I kind of made uh, 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 an amalgam of two different versions of this. They mean the same thing. But uh, when you look here, you see this funny looking symbol here. This is really the intersection symbol, all right? But what is intersection usually implied by? The word and, all right? And when you're talking about an intersection, it is sometimes better to think about it in, in terms of a Venn diagram. So intersection is that part of the Venn diagram that is an overlap. So I kind of superimposed the word and into the um, intersection symbol because I thought it was cute, quite frankly, but I, I figured it was also efficient and that's really more important, right? If you prefer, write the word and here, right? If you prefer, use the intersection symbol, but I kind of did, did uh, two birds with one stone here because that is the same thing. Just superimposed, if you will. I'm trying to be clever, is what it is. Shame on me. More specific, okay. All right, now of the examples here. Uh, let me do two things. Let me get rid of that view here. It's always a debate whether I want to keep that or not. I'm going to pull up my bootleg paint, which has been malfunctioning lately. Um, That's a little bit more conducive. Right. If you examine, uh, we'll do with this question together. I did leave the solutions there, so you don't really need me, but I wanted to discuss this anyway. Um, a single card, right? Again, this is, uh, we're talking about uh, something that's um, one thing, right? Is selected from a deck, you know? Determine the probability it is a club. So I'm gonna write that. The probability that is a club, and notice this phrase, given that, It is black. That might be my sister. She's supposed to she's in the hospital, so I have to go get her. Let me just verify what the plan is here. Yep. Okay. Uh, probability that card is a club given that it is black. I hope that's legible. Um, I'm going to take that and now reduce it to the abbreviation that is the formula. So the formula would look something like this to get started. taking advantage of the green that never writes. So I'll be just faint enough to write it like so. Let's change 
Again, starting with this problem, again, I don't think this would be fair to say that it happens 100% of the time, but think about it for right now as if we're talking about one thing that is potentially two conditions. Okay, so we're talking about a single card selected from a deck of Assume 52, all right? Determine the probability it is a club, all right, given that it is black, all right? Now, if we follow this logic as mentioned from before, what follows the word given that is probably event one, all right? So let's put B for black here. We could write the word. If it makes it more clear, then I would do that, right, black. Okay. That means that in the formula, black would be here, and black would also be here. All right. Um, alternatively, all right, if you had to decide for yourself and you don't have a phrase somehow that doesn't have the word given that, I would stick with this logic. All right. Usually, all right, the the more specific condition is the second event, and the less specific condition is the first event. All right. I would argue that to describe something as being black is slightly less specific in the context of playing cards because there are two suits that are black, spades and clubs. The more precise, specific condition would be uh, the clubs, all right? Because yes, it's black, but it's also one of the two, all right? So anyhow, uh, you think about it that way, at least to get started. And again, I can't guarantee that that will be true 100% of the time, but it w if you were left to your own devices, that's the logic I would go with, all right? Now, uh, if you're just reading things, as they are using the phrase given that, again, what follows the phrase given that is probably E1. So that would sit here, here, and here in the formula. As for club, all right, that would be E2 then. E2, two say? Right. Club, and then you have club here. All right. All right. Um, now we'll basically, since we're talking about probability, we're going to count, right? The number, the cardinal number, remember the, the set notation in this case, the number of black cards in a standard deck of 52. How many black cards are there out of 52? It's half of the deck, right? So um, if you think about it, it's 52 divided by 2, right? Half of that would be 26. Now, as for the number of cards that are black and clubs at the same time, we're referring to really one suit, all right? Um, black and clubs would be half of 26, all right? Which would be 13, right? And in which case, if you reduced it, all right? 13 divided by 26 would reduce to a half. So this would be 50% as a probability. One to two, one out of two, 50% chance. All right. The probability that a card is a club given that it's black is a 50% chance. What's the other 50? It could be a spade in theory because that's the other black, a set of black cards, okay? Two. 
This is multi pod. And there are three parts to this. Okay. <coughs> Example two A family has two children. Assuming that boys and girls are equally likely, they are. All right. All right. Determine the probability that the family has two girls. Uh, two girls, if you know that at least one of the children is a girl. All right. Two girls, given the older child is a girl. All right. This is kind of unusual that. Um, the second example, they're calling back to basically 11.4, all right? Um, to do something like this, all right, you notice there's no phrase given, well, this down here is eventually, but in the first two portions of this, there's no uh, signal phrase like given that, so you don't have to immediately jump into this formula, all right? We will get to this eventually, all right? But it isn't immediately important. Okay. When we do part C, we will definitely incorporate this. Why? Because again, there's that signal phrase, given that. All right. But between here and there, um, for these two, it might just be sufficient, and definitely for this one, to use tree diagrams. Remember, the old, that's one thing about math is that it gets recycled a lot, you know? Once you learn something, you don't just throw it away. It usually is the basis for things that follow. So, um, we're looking to calculate probabilities in all cases. And in this first case, that there are two girls, right? If we needed to calculate, and I'm gonna label this in section A. Um, A. The probability that they are both girls of two, right? I might just abbreviate it like that, right? Now to dissect this, right? Remember the probability formula, right? It would be equal to the number of events favorable to the conditions of being both girls. out of the number of events that are in the sample space total. All right. That's the uh, as concise a way as I can think to write it. Now, how would you arrive at this information much more clearly? Well, like I said, you, you could employ, this is from like way back, like section 11.2, uh, I believe, right? And this is from 11.4. Let's try t uh, tree diagrams, right? We have an origin column, we have a first child, we have a second child, and then we have a sample space. Yeah, just to kind of be orderly. Right. Um, the first child could be one of two things, potentially, right? A boy or a girl. All right. And just to make this look like a tree, I'm going to stretch it back to an origin here. No, not to be graphic, right? But what is the actual origin? It's, uh, I don't know, somebody's uh, happy times together, you know? I'm good for them, you know? Hopefully it's a nice occasion, right? Uh, not to be tasteless. But uh, um, let's assume um, uh, that this was not a drunken affair, you know? <laughs> Now, that's the, the outcome here. First child uh, uh, could be either a boy or a girl, all right? After that point, all right? It's not saying that it's coming from this person as if you were doing hereditary trees or something like that. Um, but from this point forward, all right, uh, there could be a boy and a girl after this person. These lines are just indicating after, all right? Not from, you know, or as a result of. Um, or there could be a boy and a girl here as well. And so, that's basically how the tree would break down. Not too complicated, right? There's only two choices to begin with, at least described here. 
All right, and that would be the situation first child and then second child, right? The sample space would be basically the permutations. I reluctantly will say the word combos, you know, but you know what I mean. So um, that would mean the situation of a boy and a boy. Let's see if this cooperates. BB, is that visible? Let me just maybe get it out of that seam there. Is that better? Kinda, as long as you're okay, and I know there's nobody here to complain, but I'm, I'm complaining for you. <laughs> so, uh, let me do this. Um, I'll use black, just because it writes better. Right? I wish green were better, but it never does. All right, um, BB is this first combo, really it's a permutation. All right, and then the second one is BG, second permutation here. And then if you went this route instead, girl boy, in that order, all right, or girl girl. All right, and in the sample space, normally what we would do to even bother with this is to decide, well, how many sample points would there be? How many combi combos, shouldn't say combination, permutations would you see? in this uh, entirety. Uh, it would be four, right? That's the number that would be here. The number of events total in the sample space, since it's a probability. So what do we have? Um, essentially, we have four, and then let's consider now the number of events, uh, number of outcomes favorable to the event of it being both girls. All right. Well, there's only one situation here in the sample space that is GG. It's exactly that one. So what's the answer here? It's one quarter, All right. otherwise known as 25%. Again, you might wonder, as I, I not just said a bad example for you, but you might wonder, like, why are they bringing this up? We already did that. All right, because it's still the basis of things that are forthcoming, all right? Math gets recycled a lot. Anyhow, this is the solution to part A, all right? Write a probability, a simple probability, a fraction, that would be this case, it's always the total is the bottom, all right? That's usually easier to figure out. In order to arrive at that, maybe draw a factor tree. All right, now for the second part of it, Not a factor tree, I'm sorry, um, just a tree diagram. It's got math on the brain here, you know, which is a good thing usually. Factor trees are more or less the same concept vertical. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen them, right? right? Anyhow, two girls, if you know that at least one of the girls, uh, one of the children is a girl. Uh, how to rephrase that? Let's see. This, you could kind of use the formula that we have established here. Um, notice I didn't use the word given that, all right? But um, I don't want to overcomplicate it if it isn't necessary. Um, but let's go with this. I'm going to rephrase this in uh, a formula. The probability um, of being both girls, right? If you know that, it's standing in place of given that, right? So I am going to use this formula. There's the line for given that. At least one is a girl. This is a more concise way of writing it. Okay, we're still going to borrow some information here. All right. uh, so I don't want to erase my tree diagram. But I want to adapt this, if I can, into this formula. All right. So this would be the number of events 
favorable to at least one girl. And both girls. Over the number of events that are at least one girl. Sorry. <laughs> Let's start with the bottom because it, it, it's probably easier. Okay. How many things in the sample space, the number, are at least one girl? Meaning that you see the letter G at least one time. At least one is kind of a weird, suspicious phrase, right? On purpose, right? At least one would be that one, because there's a G there that one because there's a G up in the front, but technically since we're talking about at least, which means more is possible, that one as well. Right, which makes this what? This makes this three, all right, down here. Right. Now, when you get to the top, it's a little bit more tricky, but think about it, if it helps, right? Um, think about it in set notation or in terms of Venn diagrams, remember? And is a stand-in for intersection. So the intersection of, and in that case, you want just the overlap, right? If we're talking about an intersection between two things, right? At least one girl is the number three, and it's these particular three, right? Something that is both girls is just this one. I'll put a little star here next to it on the opposite side, all right? That's both girls, that is one. If you're talking about the intersection that is just the overlap of these three things, all right, um, I'm gonna put it up here if it helps. D, G, G, B, and G, G. The at least one girl situation would be all three of these. And the both girls situation would be just this one. So how many are there that basically are encapsulated by both of these circles, if you will? Alright, just one. All right. So the top figure up here would be one. And therefore, the probability would be one to three. One out of three, one third, 33 and a third percent probability, if you like, percentages. Okay. One more of these to finish out this example. I need the space to give me. C, 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 C. All right. Um, in this case, it's a little bit more straightforward, right? Because we're using the word given that. All right. So the probability of two girls, that is both girls, given that the older child which implies what? If they're the older child, they're the first child. So I'm going to be looking here. All right. Is a girl. All right. Given that 
Um, girl first, if we will. Alright, so there are, therefore our formula would be uh, the number of events, uh, number of outcomes favorable to the event of uh, girl first uh, and both girls. It's an awkward way of speaking, right? Over the number of girl first outcomes. Again, I would start with maybe the lower number because it's less involved. It's not an intersection per se. So um, that takes a little more mental flexibility. Let's do this one. We'll make some progress here. The number of outcomes, all right, that are girl first, all right. I'll erase a little bit of my scribble here. All right. That's boy first, boy first. That's girl first, and this is girl first. So that would be two. Right. And now we'll deal with the intersection. The number of outcomes favorable to the event that is an intersection of girl first and both girls. Right. If it helps, sort of draw a cheesy Venn diagram as I did before, all right? Things that are girl first, all right, are these two, all right? So you'd have a grouping of uh, GB and uh, GG, all right? Things that are both girls are that one, all right? So this is described by girl first, it's these two th groupings here, uh, GB, GG, all right, and both girls is just that much of it, all right, so it's one of the two, all right, and since we're just dealing with the number, all right, that's one half again, all right, so this is 50%, okay. Example three. Example three incorporates a table, and you might be a little turned off by that, not to corrupt your opinion, but um, considering the subject matter too. Um, this is conditional probability that has been organized into a table, and there are four parts to this, so I'm trying to obscure uh, not too much of it. This is actually pretty easy to do because of the table, all right? Um, this is a summary of 250 patients uh, who had collectively knee, hip, and heart surgery, yay. <laughs> imagine, imagine all at the same time, that would be just jerkful, right? Uh, we asked whether they were satisfied or dissatisfied, all right? Hence these two columns here. All right. Regarding the results of their surgery, the responses are given in the table below. If one person from the 250 uh, surveyed is selected at random, determine the probability, and then condition A, um, that they were satisfied with the results of their surgery. So since they're not generalizing anymore, they, pardon me, they are generalizing, not being very specific, 
all right? Uh, we could do a simple probability here, right? Uh, if you want, I would always start with trying to abbreviate what is written verbally here, a little bit more concise, mathematic, symbolically. The probability of essentially being satisfied would be equal to the number of events favorable to being satisfied out of the total in the sample space, or total in the set. All right. This is from either section 11.1 or 11.2, I forget, right? but the basic probability fraction. This is probably my sister again. tendency myself uh, to start with the denominator because it's easier. Uh, what are the total number of people in the set or in the sample space, whichever you prefer? All right, it's 250, right? They told us that in the uh, opening anyway. Right. So down here we have 250, all right? And then now because they're not specifying what surgery they had, they just want to consider what who was satisfied. Um, how many people were satisfied, generally speaking? Right? Bottom of this, 210. Right? Now, pull some tricks. All right? You could use a calculator, certainly, but um, use employ mental math. Makes life easier. Right? See a pair of zeros? Cross them out. If you have multiple pairs of zeros, you can continue to do that. It's, uh, it only works for zeros because it's really involving dividing by 10 here and here. And you know, what you're left with is 21 over 25, which cannot be simplified. That is the probability, 21 out of 25. So um, times 4 is like 84%, right? which is pretty good for that hospital or whatever. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so there you have it. Just getting distracted here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, B uh, was satisfied with the results of the surgery. Given that, now we need to employ this. Uh, the person had knee surgery. Let me erase a little bit of the gobbledygook here. All right, to paraphrase uh, what is written here, was satisfied, so the probability that they were satisfied, given that and then that's the first event, the person had knee surgery. means that we would need to calculate um, the number of events that are the intersection of knee surgery and satisfied. This is why exactly for this reason that it makes uh, using this table a joy because it spares you having to struggle with them diagrams. Okay, again, maybe start with the bottom, because it's the easy, less complex of the two. The number of thing of uh, people who had knee surgery. All right, well, here's the knee, and here's the total here. So, 95, right. How many people had knee surgery and were also satisfied? 
75. All right? That's the situation that is the intersection, right? But without having to draw a Venn diagram, which is why the word and is sufficient, probably there. All right? So you have 75, right? 75 over 95, you could whittle away at, though, right? Um, if you divide each of these by 5, being that they are have ended upon it, right, you would get 15 over 19. Um, so that's like high 70s, I want to say, if you made it a percentage, I'm just curious. 15 divided by 19, 79 here. Yeah. This is about 79%, also very good. Doing well, hospital, wherever you are. <laughs> good job. Better than working at, you know, like, I don't know. Dodo uh, Central, you know. They give you brain surgery when you had uh, knee surgery. All right. um, C, all right. Was dissatisfied with the results of the surgery again, given that, so we're going to use this, for, this uh, formula again, all right, that the person had hip surgery. All right. So the probability of being dissatisfied two S's, given that uh, hip surgery. So, um, just not to confuse it with this thing up here. Let me erase that. This would be the number of events favorable, uh, pardon me, number of outcomes favorable to the intersection of um, hip surgery and dissatisfied. I would hate to be dissatisfied having hip surgery. It's pretty invasive. Um, over the number of hip surgeries. So, um, let's see. Start again with the bottom. Number of hip surgeries, 105. Um, the number, the number that are hip surgeries and uh, dissatisfied, so the intersection of those two, uh, hip dissatisfied courses here at 15, maybe red is an appropriate color, uh, for that reason. All right, so... Uh, 15 over 105, they're both divisible by 15, actually. Um, you divide 15 by 15, you get 1. If you divide 105 by 15, it's actually 7. Right. Right, so 1 seventh. Uh, what is that as a probability? I'm just curious. It's not bonus leap. 1 divided by 7 is about 14 percent. Not too many people are dissatisfied with their hip surgery, of course. Okay. And now we'll do D. Uh, let's see. Had heart surgery, given that the person was dissatisfied. Now they've rephrased it so that the event one and event two are basically sw uh, switched. So uh, let us engage a little mental flexibility here, all right? Given that, and then the thing that followed it was dissatisfied, all right? So this is E2, heart surgery in this case, and this is E1 in this case. The probability that they had heart surgery
given that, um, they were dissatisfied. Uh, when we expand that into the formula, we would have this. Uh, the number of event, uh, outcomes favorable to the event of the intersection of dissatisfied and heart surgery. over the number of dissatisfied. Um, again, I would start with the bottom because it's probably easier. Dissatisfied is a generalization in this case, so it's not specifying who, would, but uh, who is just generally dissatisfied. The total of dissatisfied is all 40. So that's our denominator. Now the intersection of dissatisfied and heart surgery. So heart dissatisfied crosses here, five. So this is five over 40 which can be simplified to one eighth divided by five. And is what, 32? One divided by eight. No, pardon me, um, almost 13%. And it is 12 and a half percent. One eighth. Okay. And there you have it. Okay. Um, let me show you at least one of my own. Um, the one because I, I think I swiped this from what you call it from uh, my lab, so it might be worth investigating here. Okay. There's two. Another one is a table problem. So maybe it's redundant to even do that. I, I think I made this problem. It's about coffee. Uh, it sounds like me. Um, anyhow, let's look at this one because it's kind of interesting as a student, actually. the probability of getting an A at random, given that signal phrase, you get a letter grade higher than D. Right? In a situation like this, it would be appropriate to establish the set from which you are working with. Right? Now, it's not specified in the problem, but you could really do it. Um, you could create your own grade scale, and you wouldn't be wrong, right? as long as you stick with the formulas. All right, but let's say that you had A's, B's, C's, D's, F's, and incompletes. Okay? To take this and rephrase it, all right, since you see that signal phrase, into a conditional probability, generalization here. The probability of E2 given that E1 is equal to the number of, let's see, E1 and E2s 
over the number E1. So in this case, that's the formula. I can't talk to you right now. What is the probability of, oh geez, I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted right now in case you can't tell. <laughs> so let me finish this, complete this thought, and then I will stop. Um, let's see. The probability getting an A is E2. A grade, let a, a, let a grade higher than D, uh, Right, is E1, because it follows this phrase. So to simplify that, um, an A, given that we get a grade greater than D. Right, you might abbreviate it like so. So this is the number of outcomes favorable to the event of a grade greater than D and the intersection, in this case the intersection is probably a little bit easier to think about it that way, and A specifically, over the number of grades greater than D. That is higher, you know, in this list, right? A is regarded, of course, as being the highest, right? get my sister from the hospital. She's leaving. Um, but they want me to be there before a certain time. So it's not an issue, but I had to check. Um, uh, let's see. Right. Let's look at this sample set, this set here. All right. The number of grades that are greater than D. How many are there? That's the bottom of the fraction. The fraction, and it's usually easy, right? So here's D. Everything this way would be greater. One, two, three things. Right. So we have three as a denominator right off the bat. Right. Now the other thing would be a little bit more tricky because we're dealing with an intersection of two sets. Right. Think, if you think about it from the, um, earlier in the semester when we broached the subject of um, set notation. Right. This is a set of grades higher than D. A, B, and C. And this is the set, I just described that one, and this is the set uh, that are things that are A. Very simple, right? And A. <laughs> it's just A itself, right? If we are looking for the intersection of these two, we want just the overlap, right? That is what is the same here and here, right? That is the same as this. These are the only contents, the only element here and here that is the same. How many uh, similarities do they have overall? Just that one thing, right? So therefore, the top of this, even as maybe ugly or complicated as it may look, is just the number one, because that's the overlap, right? just that one content, that one element, okay? So easier than it may seem, right? One third, right? So what is the probability of getting an A at random given that you get a letter grade 
pi as a d, one third. Right. So 33 and a third percent chance. Okay, that does not mean that you take advantage of this. All right. Uh, you want to get an A naturally, you know. The, the, the right way, not some random way. Okay. All right. Um, let me leave it at that. That is everything from the semester. All right. And from this section. So let me turn this off. And make sure that we are all on the same page here. Um, we're nearing the end, of course. What you want to do for homework is do section 11.6 in my lab, and then you are right on schedule. All right. Um, let's look at the calendar really quickly to consider what is happening next week. Okay. Um, we are here on Thursday, next week is May, and you'll have a test number three on Tuesday, right? And then there's a ketchup day. Well, we eat ketchup, right? Um, on Tuesday, next week, all right, I'm gonna mail you uh, test number three, all right? And then I'll shoot a video uh, discussing the solutions. Right. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to give me anything. I, I'm giving it to you again as a freebie, as the other two. I want you primarily to take the time. All right, especially with this, as you can see, it's 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 not something you can kind of just do. You know, half thinking about it. Um, work on section eleven uh, six. All right, and finish up. All right. All right, begin to finish up. All right, all um, chapter nine, chapter 11, and technically it was section five, four, and five, five batch, right, in my lab, right? I forget uh, when I gave you two, but I gave you at least until Tuesday, but it says it in, in um, in Canvas, all right? All right, so take the time, first and foremost, to finish up that. That's where your grade is chunk, you know, is really coming from, all right? I'm, as I mentioned, I'm gonna nail this to you and then I'm gonna go over it, okay? All right. Thank you for listening in spite of any uh, distractions. <laughs> and I'll see you on Tuesday. All right, be careful out there.